What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Sherdog.com. And it's that time of the year again as Bellator returns to a beautiful Ireland. I was going to say beautiful Dublin, Ireland. Dublin's not that beautiful. Ever. <laughs> beautiful Ireland. Maybe the people can go to the other parts of the country that are actually nice, you know. But anyway, uh, Bellator's like, the dubs are going to kill me. I shouldn't be saying that. And I'm going to Dublin here now in a couple of days. Anyway, um... Yeah, it's, and you know what? It's a very good card. It's a really, really good card. I, I haven't gone back and trawled through all the cards, but looking at it straight up here, I think it's probably the best card that Bellator uh, have brought to Dublin. Unfortunately, you know, the James Gallagher fight fell out. He was supposed to be fighting Brett Johnson. I think that would have made it uh, just without a shadow of a doubt the best, but uh, you know, unfortunately, James had to pull out of that card. Brett Johnson remains on, on the card. Uh, we, we'll talk about that in uh, in a while. Although it isn't... Uh, did the, the Bellator ever make it 100% official? I'm not sure. You never quite know with Bellator <laughs> sometimes, but... Yeah, I think yeah, I think he is on the card anyway, and uh, we will uh, we will look forward to that as we go on. But um, it's it's you know what I I said it's the best card they've brought. I re- I really think it is because you know what they have the two things that I think all Irish MMA fans wanted, and those two things are an Irish guy in a massive fight, and uh, the headliner being the the uh, you know the the apex of that obviously with Peter Quilly here against Benson Henderson. They want an Irish guy against a world name, Benson Henderson. Perfect does that. And they also want the fight between two guys on maybe the world stage, and whether it's, you know, if it was UFC coming or Bellator or whoever, fighting in Ireland. And I feel like we have that UL Royal Melvin Manuf. Now, people can say what they want about that fight, and I'll get into that fight in a second. But that's what it is, you know, Melvin Manuf, a na- Manuf a name, Yoel Romero, a massive name, you know, obviously fought for the, the UFC title a couple of times, or, well, once, was it? And he missed weight. No, I don't know. Anyway, he was right up there for years and years and years. And that's all we've ever wanted, I think. That is really all we've ever wanted. We want Irish guys getting the big chances, and we want big fights as well. And we have more than that as well. We have other big names in Bellator. We have other Irish um, people getting big chances here. So it's phenomenal. It's exactly what we wanted. You know, I've given Bellator plenty of grief over the years, but they'll get no grief off me for this one because it's a really, really, really good card from uh, from top to bottom. They have some of the best up-and-coming Irish uh, talent on the card. Maybe missing out a couple as well. Obviously, Danny McCormick not on the card and a few more as well that we would have liked to have seen. Bellator, you know, I said I wasn't anything bad about them. They have their issues as well. Only putting on the two cards a year and a lot of the Irish people only getting the two opportunities a year. It's not... Not great. That's not great for the Irish fighters, but I suppose that is a discussion for uh, for another day. And I'm here to break down this card uh, and to talk about it in full. Um, let's. Do you know what? We we we. <laughs> We, I was going to go from bottom to the top. We, we'll move around. We'll move around and we'll see what way we go. Um, I suppose a few of the the, 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 the front three uh, opening fights on the card. Uh, there is a 170-pound fight between Luca Pilat and Dante Shiro, as well as a heavyweight fight between uh, Kazim Aras and uh, Kirill Selitnikov, who's been around for a long time, uh, open up the card. And then we have a Selaju versus Jordan Barton. Now, if anyone listened to my interview with Peter Quayley the other day, You'll be excited about this fight because I asked him. You may remember a few years ago, Ariel asked uh, Brian Stan, who was the one up and coming person, you know, that you know, uh, that you've heard about in the, the gym, wherever it might be, who is, you know, the next guy. And he said, Shemayev, right? And I asked the same question to Peter Quilly, and he told me it was Asela Jew. So I'm excited, and I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> who are uh, uh, who heard that interview are probably excited to see Asel here again. Now I've seen Asel a fight uh, live a couple of times. It's time against Constantine Blanch- uh, Blanchia, who fights out of Team Rhino here, the uh, one of the other big gyms uh, in in Dublin. And that was, I think, both of them are Owen Ogan into that fight. And honestly, I don't think I've ever seen a, a better. Uh, O&O versus O&O fight ever. The, the level of that was fantastic. You know, uh, uh, Blanita is a very, very good fighter as well, but Asel, you know, as Peter Quill told me in that interview, stand up on the ground, wherever it might be, very, very good. And fighting Jordan Barton, a guy with, uh, this is going to be what, his 11th fight now, so a good bit of... Um, 
uh, you, you know, a good bit of experience there. He's fought some very good guys as well. James Hinden, who's he fought for Cage Royce Tile, didn't he? Recently, he's right up there anyway. And he fought Kieran Clark, who we'll t- uh, talk about uh, later on as well. Even as an amateur, he fought some good guys. Manny Akpan and Bobby Pallet, uh, who are, are good, uh, are good pros uh, now as well. So, um, a really, really good test for Asel Aju, and one that I think a lot of people will be uh, interested to uh, to see after what we. Um, uh, what we heard from Peter Queeley the other day in that interview. Um, the biggest fight on this card, maybe in terms of uh, meaning, might be, and may, maybe I'm going a bit too far here, but it might be Carlisle Brexton versus Carl Moore. Like, if you look at Carlisle Brexton and look at his record over the last while, you know, his last three wins, um, Yashimuradov back at, uh, at the far end of 2021. Um, Michelinko outside of Bellator and then he beat uh, Viktor Nimkov as well but he has some very very good wins and he's a win over Vadim Nimkov the champ uh, back in 2016 now that is a good while back you're going to absolutely say that but look at Nimkov's record and look at all the guys he's beaten since then. He's beaten everyone since then. And the last guy he's lost to is Karl Albrechtson. You know, Yashi Muradov was right up there uh, towards, the, uh, you know, the, the top of the division. Okay, he's taken a few losses, lost to, uh, uh, lost to Corey Anderson and others as well. But I, I believe that Corey, isn't that Corey Anderson fight happening against Nimkov here? But I'm telling you, if Karl Albrechtson wins this fight, he could, he could be the, the next in line, maybe one away. So this is a really, really big fight. And now you can talk about the main event. Maybe it's it's the same in the lightweight picture. But this is a fight I think people maybe are f- is, is kind of flying under the radar because it's the Irish guy, obviously, Carl Moore against Sam Brexton. Now, on the flip side of that, what an opportunity for Carl Moore. You know, massive, massive opportunity for Carl Moore. Carl Moore is one of these guys, right, that people listening to this. And you probably, you might have heard Derek Kelly after he won his fight the last time. You might know a bit of Kieran Clark. You Obviously, you know James Gallagher, Peter Queeley, and all of these lads coming on the way up. But maybe you don't know Carl Moore that, that well. And, and that's probably because he hasn't fought that often. Uh, he hasn't fought since 2019 now, just looking at his record here. Before that, it was 2018, 17, 16, 15. Only, you know, very, very rarely fights and uh, he's a lot of injury problems and different things and he switched gyms and f- uh, cancelled fights and loads of different things it's been a really tough time for Carl Moore but the the ability is there you know the ability is there if you look at the guys he's fought he was a cage warriors champion um he fought Paul Craig uh, unfortunately he lost that fight and he, fought, uh, and he fought um you know, he fought Josh Clark, who was in uh, the UFC. He fought uh, Cyril Asker. He's, he's fought some really good guys. Mauro Sorelli lost that fight to become a double champion at heavyweight. And, he, you know, he came back and he won against uh, Lee Chadwick in, in Bellator, as I said, in 2019. But it's very interesting because... I don't know. Did this see, look? This seems like a crazy comeback fight for, for someone who's been out of the cage for that long. But you never know with Carl Moore because Carl Moore has so much talent and he's such a strong guy and such a good athlete as well. Like he could come out here and look like an absolute beast. Like he really could. Or he could like look like a guy who hasn't fought in three years. You know, and it's, I, I find it very, very difficult to know, honestly. And that, you know, that's exciting <laughs> in a way, in another way as well. It's like maybe if you're in the in the Irish camp or in the, you know, the Carl Moore camp, you're like, oh, geez, this is a bit of a tough comeback fight. You know, but he's talking, you know, he did a, a, an interview the other day over in Severe Men. He's talking about he wants the UL Romero, Melvin Nanhoff winner if he wins this. And what a fight that'd be. You know, that, that could be main event the next Irish card, maybe, uh, if that was to happen. But... Massive opportunity here for for Carl Moore and for Carl Brexton. You know Moore is big and strong, and you know, not he's not going to be he's not going to be an easy guy to kind of manipulate around the cage as uh, Carl Brexton does sometimes. So it's a very interesting fight. That's one I'll be I'll be sitting there a cage side with bated breath waiting for that to happen because I really I really really don't know what's going to happen in that one, and maybe that could be the the, the kind of. Uh, look, at light heavyweight, at the bigger weights, you never know. Could, one lad could get caught and could be all over. But that's the kind of the, the the fight I'd be looking at the first two or three minutes of and seeing which way it goes. And uh, I'm very, very excited about that one because what, what an opportunity. You say on paper, okay, it's you should this should f- uh, uh, favour Al Brexton. And you know, if I was to give my pick, I, I would probably pick Al Brexton to win this one when I was shadow. It's very hard to pick Carl Moore based on three years out and how good Al Brexton is. But you know, the first three minutes of it, if Carl Moore is looking 
good. He can look very good. You know, at his best, he is very, very, very good. So looking forward to that one uh, there. Uh, and I suppose to give maybe the, the picks here as I go along, I go for Al Brexton, I go for a Luca Pallad as well in the fight before that. I go for a Sell and I go for a. I might as well go for Solidnikov there as well in that. Um, coming up through the ranks, then you have a, a couple of the best up and comers, I suppose, coming out of SPG at the moment Kenny Mokahana uh, and Dara Kelly. Dara Kelly fights Kai Stevens. Mokahana is fighting against Alex Bodner, two guys uh, coming over from, I suppose, the UK scene. And I think Bodner's, I think he's Russian, but he's fighting over in the UK scene for a while. Kai Stevens as well, obviously, out of the UK scene. Um, the Bodner Mokahana fight is a very interesting one. I, I think Bodner is the type of guy who is a good test for Mokahana at this stage of his career. Um, he kind of he pushes you against the cage. He makes it tough on you. He He's not an easy out by, by any means. You know, he's 4-1, so it's a pretty good record. Um, you know, he lost to, to Callum Mullen, who was 3-0 and at the time. He fought in some good shows. That Shock and Awe show is a very, very good show and Almighty Championship as well. So, you know, he has been in there with, with some good guys. He fought Kingsley Crawford as well as an amateur and beat him uh, on that Shock and Awe show. So, this guy... Is you know he's not a he's not a guy taking easy fights and he's um he's actually sorry he's born in Slovakia is it did I say Russia there born in Slovakia he's fighting out of Portsmouth and I think his brother is a, is a fighter as well so um you know you know when the brothers fight it's always good now Kenny Mokahana's brother is also a fighter um so that uh, uh that's the interesting one Franz Malambo so obviously they have different names so people maybe don't know that but uh himself and Franz on the way up actually for over and so I think Franz interviewed Kenny one time it was you know it was, it was very funny but um Kenny is a very good fighter as well you know it's it's one of those guys I think with Kenny he's very raw very raw still, but you can see the ability on him. He's good kickboxer, good takedowns. I watch one of his amateur fights there. That's up on YouTube. And he got a lovely kind of jump in double leg kind of I would call it and push the guy against the, the cage and pull them down like, like very very strong and very uh, a very good all around fighter he has been at SPG that long maybe, probably a couple of years now at this stage but um, still he. Um, uh, he's a guy who's a lot of improvement still to do, I think. And at 3-0, the, the, the sky's the limit for Kenny Mokahana. So definitely looking forward to seeing him here uh, in against Alex Bodner. Then Derek Kelly. Derek Kelly, I'll tell you, I probably told this story uh, 50 times now, but I remember at the last weigh-ins, I walked in and... Uh, or, or I was sat there and I was doing the video or whatever, doing the live stream, and Derek Kelly walked in. And I was like, this... It, it, it was Mr. Olympia supposed to be coming out here or something or is this the wins honestly I don't I don't think and I've been in a good few wins now and different things I don't think and maybe look I'm seeing Yuel Romero next week so uh, <laughs> or this week even so maybe Yuel Romero will beat this but I've never seen someone uh, in the shape that he was in absolute Adonis uh, uh, unbelievable I remember um I was in the Lewis in the tram system in Dublin going into, the, was it the first Bellator or just the second Bellator, but the first of the uh, the more modern uh, era, I suppose. And uh, Carl Pinder sat down alongside me and I was just looking at him like, Jesus, yeah. <laughs> and he was up at Middlewell at that time, so he put on an extra bit of uh, muscle to get in there. But did Derek Kelly had a similar sort of reaction. This guy is an absolute beast. And then he goes in there and puts on the performance that he did uh, in that fight. And you've seen him in fights before that as well. He's a guy who I think carries the muscle and carries the size very well. He's an unbelievable athlete. He's fast as well as strong. Looks like a very good technical fighter as well. I know he does a lot of work with Dave Roach, uh, who, you know, by all accounts is, is one of the top coaches, uh, you know, in, in Europe and, and, and definitely around the Irish scene, but abroad as well. A lot of people talking a lot of good things about Dave Roach, obviously fighting or, or training in the SPG gym. And Derek Kelly, you know, is, is maybe one of his disciples as well as, as the other coaches there. Um, and he looks great. And his opponent, Kai Stevens, like I watched a bit of Kai Stevens here before uh, before this. And you know, he's a very, very good fighter. Good, technical fighter. If you were to, to show me one guy in this card, maybe the, of the, the up-and-comers, who's maybe more well-schooled in terms of, you just look at his technique and you look at the things he does. I don't think there's anyone better than, than him. The one difference I would say between him and Derek Kelly is that athleticism. Now, Kelly is looks like a very good, very well-schooled fighter as well, as I said, under Dave Roach and, and the others in that gym as well. And he, you know, he can throw a punch very well and all, you know, the, the basics, which are absolutely needed um, to, to be a top-class MMA fighter. But 
that, that was the, the one thing I would say about Stephen. I think he does. So it looks he looks a bit awkward at times because he's not the athletic phenom like someone like Kelly is or Morgan or even like you look at Al Brexton or others like that. Um, but I think that'll take you a long way in MMA. Now the problem is it'll only take you so far when you're against someone who is of a similar level that way and in way more athletically um, uh, inclined, inclined is not the wrong word, but, uh, you know, gifted, I suppose, in you. And it's not a gift because he's, <laughs> he's earned it. There's a lot of people who could be, uh, if it was just a gift, they'd be looking like him, but not a lot of people do look like him. But as I said, it's not just the looks, it's not just the muscles or anything like that. His ability to use them, his ability to move around, it's just phenomenal. And he has that technique as well. So I think it's going to be a tough night for Kai Stevens. I, I feel a bit sorry for Kai Stevens, honestly, in this fight, because I think he's a good guy, a good fighter, and a guy who probably... You know, if he loses this fight, he'd be three and two coming out of it. And I think he's a better fighter than that. You know, so maybe it's the type of one that'll actually bring him on. And you know, maybe he'll win. Who who knows? But yeah, I would definitely favor Derek Kelly uh, in that one. But uh, that's another fight I'm, I'm looking forward to. And you know, to see as well how Derek Kelly deals with someone who is, I think, is technically proficient. And not even te- technically proficient, maybe is wrong word, but I, I think a very good fight IQ and a very good, uh, very good at kind of following what you should do. And, uh, you know, that's always tough. So interesting to see that one. Uh, then we've Brian Moore. You know, a guy, uh, as I said as, again the other day, I spoke to Peter Queeley the other day and talked about, you know, that first level of Irish MMA guys or the, the you know, the, the, the crew from Ashton Daly, McGregor, Pindred, Paddy Hoolan and all them that came through and Queeley was on them. And Brian Moore's one of them as well. And there aren't many of them left, you know. Brian, Queeley, uh, obviously Conor McGregor, and maybe there's one or two more, the, you know, still, still doing a bit out there. But Brian Moore is definitely one of them. And... I, I, do you know what? Brian is one of those guys that I, I, I feel like he's always one big win away from you know climbing those ranks. Maybe I, I know the uh, the tournament is on at the moment, but if he'd gotten it at the right time, he would have climbed into the tournament and gotten in there. And it feels like it's always kind of just it's he's just missed out on it, and he's good enough to get a good win against the top fighter he really is that fight against uh, Jarnell Lugo was very very close he almost won in the last round against uh, Mikhailov after you know as he kind of said himself a poor performance to start it out he, you know he was 3-0 and all before that had lost again a decision to know I'd had it's all decision chair you know he fought uh, AJ McKee Back in 2017, uh, I put on a great display against AJ McKee. You know, I fought Daniel Weichel before that uh, in his uh, in his Bellator debut. Like, Brian Moore is only losing to really, really good guys here and guys who are ranked and guys who are getting into, you know, the tournaments or getting into big fights. And that's unfortunate that when, you know, if you can't just take that next step, and it's not that he can't take the next step, I think he absolutely has the ability. He could have watched that Jarno Lugo fight again. Actually, I watched bits and pieces of that. Uh, I need to go back and watch the full thing, and maybe I'll, you know, I'll do a rewatch of it or something and watch the whole fight and score it again, because I remember he came out to me afterwards and goes, why would you score that? And I hadn't, you know, when you're there covering the card, I was interviewing someone, or, and I didn't see the full card, uh, the full fight, and I was like, I, I don't know, I, didn't, I, I said it straight out, I didn't see the full thing, but it was a, it was a contentious decision, uh, not a contentious decision, but a close decision at the time. Um, it was, do you know what it was? It was a very high level fight, a really, really high level fight, and um, I, I think that is the level that Brian Moore is at. And I just hope that th- that sort of loss doesn't kind of bring down his spirit or anything like that, because I still think he has the ability and the time to get there. He, okay, he's thirty five years of age now. He has another few years, I think. There, he uh, and. This fight against um, Arivaldo Silva, I think it's a good opportunity to maybe to get back to winning ways. Now, Silva is a very, very uh, experienced guy. He has uh, 29 fights. Um, <laughs> it's funny. I, I watched, I, I looked him up, and he's, he's never had a fight on a big promotion, as far as I can see. He hasn't fought in Bellator or the UFC or anything like that. He fought on, I think it's like Chris Cyborg looking for a fight or something like that the last time, and that fight is up. But he has himself, I think, uploaded a load of his fights to YouTube, and it's all like his early fights. And they were like 2007. I'm like, well, is there any point in watching a guy from 2007? But I watched his most, uh, uh, his most recent fight. And you know what he is? He, he reminds me, I, I don't know, a lot of people know him, but Caelan Lochran. He's a, an Irish fighter coming up. He's fighting uh, Luke Shanks here shortly over in Cage Warriors. And the way he strikes is, is very unique, Caelan. But 
uh, Anavelda Silva fights in a, 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 or uh, strikes in a very similar way. He kind of just, we- you know, Joel Romero actually strikes a bit like that as well, but for a smaller fella, he kind of just stands in that pocket and he just, he's looking strong. He's absolutely yoked, this guy. And he just throws big shots, but he's always looking for the takedown when he does it. You know, it's probably what Joel should be maybe more like, you know, looking for the takedowns more. But that's what this guy's like. He's a lot of submissions uh, on his record. Um... Uh, and you know he's one of those guys 11 submissions and 19 wins only one knockout so he looks for the big power shots but the, you know he only has one knockout so he isn't the most powerful guy in the world 40 years of age now as well so he's getting on and he needs to you know he needs to make that big move now but I uh, I look I think if Brian Moore can fight he's just normal game good technical striking jabbing boxing game from the outside don't get into a fight with this guy don't get clipped by him don't get pushed against the cage circle away out i think he can win a decision here i really do maybe even get him out of there but uh it's you know he, he's only uh, he, he's only been knocked out twice in in uh, in those a uh, lot of fights and i also he's one of these guys you look up and there's loads of fights there that are not on any of the database, <laughs> so I, I feel like you know he's uh, what is he thirty fights a little bit more with draws and no contests. He probably has a, he probably has a lot more <laughs> than that, maybe in different rules and all that. So uh, you know, a big fight for both guys, but I I think Brian Moore will win that one there. Um, then we have Kieran Clark against George Sasu, um, a very very interesting fight. Now. Actually, sorry, we have one more fight before. Uh, no, we will get that. We'll talk about Kieran Clark versus George Hassel. Um Kieran Clark. I remember speaking to him to last time. I, I think it was a before or after the fight, and he was kind of saying that he doesn't like to be kind of pigeonholed as this, you know, wrestler even or hard nosed fighter kind of job. He likes, you know, he he's, he's very common or not common, but he 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 very much kind of stood up for his ability and his technique and all that, and. I like that. I like to see that out of a fighter. You know, I like to see him kind of fight back. Now, I don't think anyone was kind of saying anything bad about him. Like, to be a hard-nosed, tough guy is, is a compliment in mixed martial arts. Um, and I think watching Maxim of his fights, he hasn't, he's only really shown that in most of his fights so far. He hasn't had the opportunity, maybe, to show all of it. And, you know, some of his fights, I think, was up to his last fight in the Divine Eye Poke or something like that. Um, and maybe the George Sasu fight is the opportunity to show that. Now, Maybe it's not as well because George Sasu can strike. You know, he's good on the feet. Um, he isn't a guy who I would probably go 50-50 with on the feet just to prove a point if I was Karen Clark. Like, get this guy to the ground, pull him down, take him down and win the fight that way. I, I You know, sometimes it's grand proving a point. It's fine proving a point. It's fine trying to show your, show off, but you also want to get the win. You know, Clark is 5-0 and all now. Get the 6-0, and all, pull him to the ground, take him down and grind out another decision. There's not, there's nothing wrong with that at that stage of your career. It's a very interesting fight as well. And Kieran, like Kieran Clark is one of these guys. He has, I don't know really how it's happened. I think it's just because it's, it's kind of, he's been him. But he's, very very big fan base you know he's from uh, it's, I always mix him up Drahada isn't it not Dundalk Drahada Drahada yeah I always mix them up which is one of the biggest towns in Ireland and there's uh, you know there's um, a massive fan base up there and he is a really really big fan base and he is a guy who he's maybe not the, the biggest character in the world or anything like that but he's a very good fighter and a, a guy people I think like to get behind and this is a, an interesting fight for him as well as I said again Sasu a very very good striker you know this is one I think could go either way I think Clark is going to have to have a very very uh, good game plan coming in here and I, I think if he doesn't and I think if it does stay in the field I think Sasu has every chance so not to pick every Irish fighter but I'd pick Clark here again but with the proviso that maybe Maybe it'll be uh, it'll be one that he maybe strikes with early and then goes right. I need to change around and take this to the ground. And uh, if he does that, I think he will win it. Um, the the one undercard fight that I uh, I jumped over there was uh, Georgie Carcanyon versus Kane Musa. Uh, <laughs> Carcanyon seems to be fighting a lot of guys from uh, the UK and Ireland over the last while. He fought Saul Rogers. He fought uh, who else? He fought, he fought Keith for Crosby. He fought Paul Redmond. Um, and look, this is another. Uh, another tough fight, I suppose, for uh, for Kane Musa here. Uh, he was supposed to fight Peter Quealy the last time. That didn't manage to happen. He lost to Davy Gallon before that. Um, yeah, like, 
Musa, he hits hard. He's good on the feet. Um, he's a good all-round fighter, but I would expect Carcanyan to win this one, honestly. I think he's wrestling. will probably be a bit too much to take the fight to the ground and uh, and win it there. And the main card then, again, uh, there's some very, very good fights. Liam McCourt versus Dana Silva. I believe that's opening the main card, although I don't think the official, um, uh, the official card is out yet. Also, that fight, uh, Brett Johns against, uh, I think it's uh, Jordan Winsky. Uh, he's fighting as well. So that was the one fight that was missing. I'm not sure exactly where that is in the carb as well. But look, a big opportunity for Brett Johns. Uh, he always brings over a crowd from Wales. So that'll be, I, I'd say he'll win that fight. Winsky, a good fighter, but not the best fighter in the world. So fancy Johns in that one. Liam McCourt against Anna Silverdome. Very interesting fight. The last time Liam McCourt fought uh, in Dublin, she fought against Sinead Cavanaugh. It was one of the weirdest fights I was ever at. Because people you know the same people were cheering both fighters <laughs> it was one of those ones it was such an odd fight that the fans didn't know who they wanted to win they wanted both of them to win and they wanted neither of them to lose <laughs> and it just turned into one of the oddest fights ever and then obviously there was the injury to Sinead early and then everyone was like oh Leah's gonna win this but then Sinead kept going and then Sinead ended up winning the fight very uh, it was a one of the oddest fights but a brilliant fight at the same time as well and I think a fight we will see again down the line but Liam McCourt uh, has a big, a big opportunity here. But also, like, it, it's a tough one. It's it mentally to come back from that fight to uh, to be back in Dublin. You know, that fight probably would have earned her a title shot. And this one is, uh, you know, against Diana Silva. Like Diana won her last fight against Gina Harding, and um, was <clears throat> was on the fight you watch like seven minutes of fight and go, geez, how's Diana Silva going to kind of win this? I think Janae got a little bit tired and Silva started landing a few of her shots. I think that's what Leah kind of needs to avoid here. You know, Leah, we know how good she is on the ground, her submissions and her, her judo and all of that. I think she needs to get this fight to the ground early and don't give Diana Silva a chance because I think that's the only way Silva beats her. I think the only way Silva wins this fight is if she kind of toughs it out uh, and starts to take over on the feet. Now, you know, early as well Leah has you know been striking maybe more than she uh, had previously in recent fights and you know she's definitely gotten a little bit better but I wouldn't say she's up there with the very top now of, of that division obviously sorry about all that now Silva is indeed a really but uh, I think the easiest and bet, best path to victory for Leah McCord is push her against the, uh, the against the fence hip toss get on top and beat her that way it really is and uh, it's a big fight for her, big mental fight, but a big physical tussle as well here. I think she will win it. I think she will do that. So a very interesting one there. Um, the next, the, the last three fights in on the card. What, what an array of fights here. Mads Burnell versus Pedro Carrillo, Yoel Romero versus Melvin Manhoof, and Vincent Anderson versus Peter Quealy. And Burnell versus Carvalho, I suppose. Two lads who've been right up there at the top of the division for the last while. Burnell lost to Barrocks last time out. A fight he kind of... I wouldn't say he threw it away, but I don't think he performed to the level we've known for him. And I, I thought a lot of people going into that thought he win. Now, Barrocks is a very, very good fighter as well. But the wins he's had before that, very good. Emmanuel Sanchez, Saul Rogers. Um, and then in, in Cage Warriors, he's had some very good wins as well. Uh, Lucas Rakowski, Steve Amiable. You know, he fought... He obviously fought in the UFC back in the day as well. Lost to Arnold Allen. But since then, he's looked absolutely phenomenal. Pedro Carvalho kind of called for this fight uh, a few times. Now, Pedro lost his last fight. Very close fight as well. A split decision uh, to Peter uh, Nidielski. One that happened uh, at Bellator 280. Beat Vichel before that. A, a phenomenal performance. And that was the type of win, you know, after losing the, the, the title fight and losing to JJ Wilson as well, that kind of got him back on the road. And in the Nidielski fight, was just the weirdest matchmaking of all time that Bellator tend to do sometimes. Um... And that kind of set him back again. But massive opportunity here against Burnell. He's going to be right up the top of the division if he wins this. And for Burnell, it's the opportunity to get back up there as well. Look, we know what both guys are like. Uh, Carvalho, very strong striker, comes forward, you know, walks you down, throws big hard shots. Mads Burnell does the same in lots of ways, but on the ground is an absolute beast altogether. Nine submission wins out of his 16, only one knockout and six decisions as well. But an absolute beast on the ground. Look, if he gets this fight to the ground, it's going to be very hard for Pedro Carvalho to stop him. So Carvalho is going to 
Look, he's going to need to do one of two things. He's going to need to either like circle out or stay away from him and try to catch him or push him back and find a way to stop him getting off any takedowns to get him down. Don't get into a clinch with him. Don't don't get into any area where the fight can end up on the ground with him. And if it does, make sure you're on top. Make sure you're landing the shots. Make sure you're in a position where you can kind of push away and get out from him because Burnell is so, so dangerous there. But it's one of those fights. It's a really exciting fight. You know, you're, you could call it an old school striker versus grappler matchup, I suppose. But it's it's more than that because both of these guys are very, very good. And uh, what an interesting fight. Uh, up there as well, maybe the most high level fight on the card. Brilliant fight. Then we have Yoel Romero versus Melvin Manhoof. Um, and I, I, I'll, I think I'll go with uh, Burnell to win that fight. I'll go with Liam McCourt to win the one before it as well. Uh, if I didn't give that pick, and I'll go with Kieran Clark. Um, Yoel Romero against Melvin Manhoof. Um, I know a lot of people don't like this fight, and maybe I wouldn't if I wasn't going to see it, but to see the madness of this, I think, look, this fight was obviously supposed to happen before, and I remember kind of convincing myself at the time that it would be a good fight, and I'm, I'm, I'm here to convince myself again that it's going to be a good fight, if I'm being honest. Because if you, if, you, if you think about it, right, let's, let's spell this out. How did Yoel Romero fight? Now, he fought maybe differently a little bit in his last fight, but he kind of, he waits and he waits and he waits and he waits for that big shot. He waits for maybe a counter, or he waits for someone to make a mistake. Like, Melvin Manhoff is not going to let Yoel Romero wait. And he's going to come in. He's going to start throwing big shots. And what if he, if he catches him at one, he could put him out. Melvin Manhoff has the power to knock any man in this planet out. And if you're standing there waiting for him, that's going to be tough. Now, how long is he going to stand there waiting for him? And how long is he going to uh, wait until he uncorks a big left hand or a big flying knee or something like that? That's probably the difference there. Um... I think Yoel will stand with him. Honestly, I think Yoel will stand and strike with him and think he can win the fight there. And you know, maybe he will, and he probably will, if we're being honest. But God almighty, that's exciting to me. You know, that is a that, that is an exciting fight to me. And uh, maybe at this stage of Melvin Manov's career, that shouldn't be the fight that's being made. But uh, God almighty, I've, uh, I think there will be like 45 seconds of absolute madness in this fight. <clears throat> and someone will get knocked out. It'll look it'll more than likely be Melvin Manov. But I, I, for that madness alone, I'm up for this one. Now, can you will train a couple of takedowns? Can he do that? Maybe, maybe if the fight goes a little bit longer. But I don't think so. I think he's going to strike, and I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be whoever lands first is uh, getting absolutely knocked out. And uh, do you know what? I'm going to be cage side for it. Like, how it is? It's going to be absolutely, it's going to be absolutely brilliant, brilliant altogether. And in the main event, Benson Henderson versus Peter Quayle. Um, I spoke to both of these guys, obviously, in the lead-up. Uh, Benson a bit out from the, the card maybe seven weeks ago or something like that, and he hadn't gotten into his training camp yet, and he was a bit maybe looser. And Peter Quigley was just kind of, I think, maybe before his last sparring session or something like that, so very close to the fight. And they had obviously very different mindsets. I think Benson overall is at a stage of his career where he's kind of just He's almost traveling the world to take fights. If you want to put it that way, he's gone on holiday for a week, I think, in Ireland after this. And hey, I, I don't know, is that the best mindset to be in? He's also, I think he signed a four or five contract. And he's like, these are the last four fights in my career. And he means it, you know, he's not like most people. He, I think he was going to retire before. And he's like, look, I'll have four more. Whatever happens, let's go kind of job. I, I don't think he's too bothered about fighting for titles or anything like that. Whereas Queely on the other side of it, then, like, this is a massive fight for him. He's one and one with the current champion. Um, if he beats Vincent Henderson, he'd probably be getting another title shot. For being honest, like there's, it's weird in MMA these days. It always feels like you lose, you're, the, you know, you lose uh, to to the champion, and you're almost straight back in there. Whereas Peter Quigley's one on one with the champion, and there was no talks. That was very weird. And you know, a lot of people probably give out about the doctor stoppage in the first fight, but what there was nothing wrong with that doctor stoppage. It was a bad call. Peter Quigley caused it with elbows. It was a fair and honest win. Um, but he hasn't got that opportunity. It wasn't even talked about. And I, I think that'll put a bit of fire under him. And I also think the fact he's facing Vincent Anderson. Now, he said to me in the interview, if you told me when I was starting out or, you know, when I was on the way up, that I'd be facing Vincent Anderson, you know, the former UFC champion in a main event in Ireland. He said, I probably, I, I don't exactly what he said, we would have laughed at you kind of job, you know? And this is a massive opportunity for him. Now, it's, been, uh, it's, uh, it's not all been easy for Quigley over the last years. You know, he lost that fight to Patricky. He lost to Miles Bryce in the two biggest fights he's had in the arena. But look, he beaten Patricky as well, beating Ryan Scope in a massive comeback. And this is a huge opportunity for him. The one worry I would have for Quigley, though, is I think what he's good at, so is Vincent Henderson, if you get me. Like, Quigley is 
uh, I, I was talking to Richard Coyley the other day, uh, one of his teammates, and he was saying like he's an unbelievable gas tank. You know, Coyley was kind of saying that himself as well. The five rounds is something that he loves and it really suits him. But Vincent Henderson is a really, really good gas tank as well. Now, maybe if he hadn't, he's only doing six weeks of camp or whatever, maybe he won't, won't have as, as good of a gas tank, but I think he will. Um, and that kind of... The way Queely wins fight is with that. You know, he pushes you against the cage. He he comes forward striking. He tries to land those big shots and he can keep doing that because he's a very good gas tank. Whereas ben, Benson isn't maybe the... Uh, won't go as, as forward much and land big strikes. But he, he will go forward, but he will land, you know, maybe three or four strikes, you know, throw combinations, go for the odd takedown and things like that and keep going. It's, he's a one-paced fighter, you know. He keeps fighting and that's a good pace. That's not a bad thing. That's He fights at the same pace for the whole fight. And... Um, that's going to be tough for Peter Queeley. It really, really is. I, I, I think Queeley. Look, I'm picking Vincent Henderson to win this fight. I've been honest, but Queeley's going to have to pull out something extraordinary. I think to win this because it's it's one of those ones that's very hard. Now, the last time I said that it was uh, uh, Leon Edwards against Usman. I said he's a little bit better at everything, and I think Vincent Henderson's probably a little bit better at everything than Peter Queeley. Um, but we saw how that ended. So it, it's a it's a massive opportunity for Peter Queeley. Um, if he can, I was actually thinking, right? If he wins this fight, I think I don't think there's any any doubt about it. Apart from Conor McGregor, it's the biggest Irish victory ever. But even including McGregor, has uh, how many better fighters from around the world have been beaten by Irish guys than Vincent Henderson? Right? You put okay, Jose Aldo by McGregor. Is Chad Mendes better than uh, him? Max Max Holloway, maybe. All right, yeah. Uh, Eddie Alvarez, I'd say probably no. Uh, who else? You know, I think this is like the second or third biggest win, McGregor included, for an Irish fighter ever. If Peter Quilly can do it, and that is massive, that is absolutely massive for Irish MMA. But overall, as a kind of uh, finish out this uh, this preview here, it's a very very good card, a very good card. I think uh, an interesting main event, uh, an insane co main event. Burnell and Carvalho is going to be bonkers. I think I think someone's getting the finish there. Good to see Liam McCourt back. Great to see Brian Moore back. Kieran Clark, interesting to see where he can go. You know, the Albrechtson versus Moore fight is, uh, you know, uh, massive test for Carl Moore, but for Carl Albrechtson, it could mean, you know, title shot. Then the up and comers of, of Kelly, uh, Asela Ju, Kenny Mokahana, and, and the others as well in this card. Really good for Irish MMA and abroad. And uh, do you know what? I'm looking forward to uh, being up there in Dublin and uh, and seeing it here very, very, uh, very, very soon. So I will leave it at that. Um, my name is Sean Sheehan for Sherdog.com, and I'll see you all next time.